feel the field right now? This space, this temple space? Feel how the energy changed? Do you feel that? Yeah. Probably your hat. <laughs> A very activating hat, isn't it? Yeah. So you have to show, so yeah. So I am coder. That's it. How do we go about this? All right. So, I don't know. <laughs> back in December, uh, if if you were part of those meditations that happened the, the 12, 12, 13, 14, um, uh, where there was that that turning point in the trajectories and. We got 100 plus people together three mornings in a row up on Cathedral Rock in a circle doing gate work and meditation and toning and light language. It, just, it just kept rolling for like an mm, hour and a half or everything each day. Yeah. And, and this is when everyone was saying, don't get together, stay away from each other. And I, being the Don't rebel, breathe near was each like, other. yeah, and yeah. I, being the rebel, was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. this is more important than anything else that's going on. Um, and sure enough, and I, I just want to honor everybody who does that kind of thing, because it's all heart-based and intention. You're not getting anything out of it personally or totally in service you want to unify even showing up today you know it's just that pure intention of service how do I get better at what I do how do I get better at what I do um, and and Kate and I have been friends for a bit 600,000 years <laughs> 600 if you want to go years. way back to the Arcturus days I know and this is the thing like when you <laughs> cross paths with one of your star sisters like is everything I can do not to speak Arcturian to you now. <laughs> 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 I just got goosebumps. <laughs> I'm just going to move a few constellations around. Don't mind me. <laughs> but we started, well, so uh, these, this core group of sisters who are the support team for the Crystalline Convergence now. Ooh, ooh, thank you, the crew. Um, we discovered that we had this very strong connection. And then, of course, every time you unify with the same heart intention and the frequency, everybody gets brighter, your visions go nuts. You know, it's just like, oh, you know, again, two or more of you get together, magic happens, right? So... We started rolling with a conversation because they agreed to be the support team for the Crystalline Convergence back in December. So we've been working on the field and working on this event and everything together. But um, <laughs> Kate, while she's in Sedona, starts getting these downloads. I am guided to be the scribe for the Crystalline Codex. Transcribe the Codex is what I heard in my camping van down at the... And I was like, what? And, and like me with gatekeeping, when I first heard that, I'm like, I don't even know what gatekeeping is. What <laughs> I are you know, talking I'm like, about? What's a codex? They yeah. said, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. But and Google says it's a handwritten ancient text. So oh, had cool. to be scribed, had to be scribed by hand. All right, all right. Yeah. My so handwriting she's walking sucks. Around. <laughs> it's like the only C I got in school was handwriting. handwriting. I'm like, why me? Why'd you pick me? I can't even scribe. I mean, you know, anyway. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, this <laughs> so she's walking around with this intention, you know, walks into, what was it, Earth Fair? No, Earth, I, and then I'm Earth laying bound. there in my camper van, you know, I'm like, I hope that's all they're, they've got for me. And they're like, oh, and you need a very specific book. Mm. And then prescribed, started showing me Gregorian chant books, you know, those really big leather bound books. And they mm -hmm. were opening the pages and showing me these beautiful Gregorian chants where the first note and the first letter is beautifully scribed and, you know, beautifully lettered. And I'm like, that's really gorgeous. <laughs> that's not me. And they're like, no, no, you've got to get a big leather bound journal with hand stitching. And it's got to be brown, and it has to be, have papyrus in it. I said, do you know what timeline I'm in? <laughs> papyrus? 
That's like a virus, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then I said, okay, so where am I supposed to find said journal? And they said, up the hill. I'm like, up the hill literally, or are we speaking in, you know, <laughs> and they're like, no, up the hill. So I went up the hill from my campground uh, to Uptown Sedona and found said journal. Because I'm there. Yeah, and it is. It's all papyrus and everything. It's really It's handmade incre- friggin' paper. I mean, it's like unbelievable. Not only that, it's embossed. This leather is embossed with Gaia codes. I mean, when you all get a look at this thing, you're going to see this is all like, like leaves and plants. New and Earth and Gaia codes yeah. embossed on there. Yeah. The stones were extra. They are like, whatevs. But, you know, <laughs> the stones, the, they weren't talking to me about, about the stones. We can open it later, sister, right? I, I won't open it now. But. Yeah, not now. But the thing is, so she, so she brings <coughs> this, and we're all gathering at, at my place <coughs> while, while Kate is in town. And we, she, she walks in. She's like, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> you know, she's got this box. And she pulls out the books. And, of course, all of us are sitting around the kitchen table just going, our, our higher levels are going nuts. We're literally opening the book and turning the pages and, like, seeing all, all this, like, light codes. <laughs> and, like, uh, uh, just, uh, <laughs> man. It was really, it was kind of intense. It was intense. But then it was her task to start scribing this. And the, the deeper you got into it and everything, like she's kind of turning into the codex. So she's got like oh gosh. clothes on her arms that are now on her hat, like just like, you know, just like kind of becoming, again, highly creative. But, um, but what we're finding is the more that we tapped into it, because it had something for everyone yeah. that work. And you can see like the quantum consciousness that kind of planted that seed with Kate. And then we started having a conversation one night that was, we were just on the phone. And all of a sudden it was like, I was getting all these, all this information, downloads, kind of straying away from that term. But um, all this information on the galactic heritage of Gaia and how the Galactics had the forethought to plant things here on the garden planet for our, our journeys of ascension. And that when the frequency match starts rising, that gets unlocked, revealed, right? So all of a sudden, I'm getting like, where are these plants are from? What's the root of this and everything? At the same time that Kate is getting symbols, right? Symbols, symbols and, and oracles. Yeah. 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 So it was just kind of interesting. I just want to connect everyone with what happens when you get together and kind of pursue this. It, it is creativity. You know, it's not just taking dictation. Like there has to be a book and it has to look a certain way. And when you honor that, and you just kind of just show up. She didn't know this, uh, this existed. Certainly you know. not up the hill in Sedona at the time. <laughs> I know. I, thought, so I, I thought I got that part wrong. I'm like, did I hear that right? No, no, yeah. Up the hill. But remember so when we talked about it. the frequency loop? Like sending out the intention, okay, I got the message. And you, even though they're like, well, it's got to be leather bound, it's got to be papyrus, and it's got to be stitched and everything like that, you're like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let it present. Yeah. And, and then. It did. It did. It, yeah. was, it was really cool. Yeah. Really cool. In fact, I went up, I went up the hill <clears throat> at that point, and um, I went into a, a shop up the hill to get some stickers. And um, one of them was um, had some. Uh, one of them were for for the sisters because <laughs> we were laughing about how nothing's normal anymore, right? <laughs> and so I found these stickers that said "normal is relative." So I knew I had to get one for each of the sisters. So I go in the <laughs> store to it. get four "normal is relative" stickers. And um, I hear a psst in my ear, and they're like, look to your right. <laughs> and so I look over, and there's a wall of journals. And I say, I think I said this out loud in front of the woman at the front desk. I said, those are all too small. <laughs> and I, you know, and she's like, what? And I said, oh, 
And then they said, ask her where you could get the journal. So I said, do you, do you happen to know where I could find a large brown journal with, you know, papyrus? No, I didn't say papyrus. I said, like, maybe handmade paper or something? And she said, yeah, I actually do. You know, and she ended up leading me to the place that I found this, um, this journal. It was so great. But if I hadn't listened to that guidance, I probably would have not found this journal because I wouldn't have known where to go. So I needed the help, you know, from other people. But um, I just listened, I kept listening, I kept listening, I kept showing up, I kept showing up. And, um, you know, it's interesting because I, I'm so building off of the conversation you and JJ just had about creativity. And um, I too have, I mean, I come from um, a big business background before I became a crystalline shaman, and, or I said yes to becoming a shaman. Um, and um, I have a lot of masculine energy too, and I'm very good at doing and making and creating with others. Um, but haven't been doing that for a while with creative teams or designer teams. And it was, it's so, I, my guidance has been to sit way back, uh, be the exalted queen in the chair. Um, some of you have talked to me about the mother ray, you know, the homework or the preparatory work that I provided for some of you and you've been talking to me about today about how that works. It's more me being in that state, being in the mother, the divine mother energy <clears throat> and putting intention out and, and waiting for that to loop back to me. And when it does, and it, I have to be very aware of how the guidance shows up so then I can show up, right? It's not me doing it. It's not me going, I'm going to go out and look for a leather bound, you know, big old Gregorian chant journal. I wouldn't have found it if I had done it the old way. So yeah. I've had to have a lot of trust with this process because, you know, I had a lot, of, I met a lot of resistance in the process of creating this because I didn't think I was a worthy um, choice. I don't, I'm not a designer, I don't draw. You want me to draw symbols? I, you know, they pull me, I, these symbols would come and I'd have to pull off the side of the road because my visual field would be taken over by these mm -hmm. symbols. And I'm sure any of you who, who see symbols, which is, you know, pre-language, before we had language, before we had words, we had ancient symbols. So they speak to us, it's a, a form of communication. They, I, I would, it would take my visual field and it wouldn't mind when it was. I'm like, hey, I'm driving. You know, I could have an accident. <laughs> well, I'll pull over. You know, it's like, <laughs> a little of my common sense here. Uh, how long is this going to take? I don't know, 15, 30 minutes. You know, and then I'm trying to draw and I can't see. And um, then I can't draw, but I can draw. Uh, that's just, I'm saying that for humor. I mean, I really can't. I'm not a designer. But they also said, this is not about perfection, Kate. You've got to drop being perfect. And so a oh, lot of revelation. Say it again, sister. You've, say it you've again. got to draw. <laughs> you've got to drop being perfect. You've got to drop trying to draw the perfect resemblance of what's showing up as platinum steel images in your visual field. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Do your, you know, just, just, just get out of the way. And call back divine perfection is the right use of life force. Mm, thank right? you, sister. So the perfection yeah. is not the way you do it. It's the frequency, right? It's the <clears throat> willingness to show up for yourself, too. Yeah. Like I'm, as a, a Virgo, I don't know if you want to label that, stepping in as a Virgo, like... This crystalline convergence, like you can ask, ask Dex. <laughs> He's like, I have never seen anybody do <laughs> as much organizational work or anything around. Every little detail is taken care of. Oh, you know. We have spreadsheets from Sandra. Each of us, our own unique one, with highlights of what oh, yes. each of us are supposed to be doing. Like it's the same spreadsheet. She just. Like mine I'm has totally, my stuff, Angela yeah. has her stuff, you know, yeah. JJ has hers. It's so I'm divine. totally into like making things as easy as possible. I think that's just part of my role too is like, let's just interpret this in the simplest way possible. But, um, but that perfection thing too, like when, when I receive divine perfection is the proper application of divine life force. I was like, ah, okay. Cause that gets into the quantum divine will and everything that's going on now. The thing that really lit me up about the conversation that we had yeah. with this, was this kind of galactic origin thing because it ignited a lot of memory in my fields and in you know the multidimensional self and then realizing, I, I'm pretty sure that everybody in the room realizes there's no separation between you and the Arcturians or Pleiadians, whatever you want to uh, label them as, that it's actually other aspects of yourself that you're 
uh, interacting with. Different expression, just like Kate and I sitting here. Different expression, but it's the you can feel like the oversoul level or I am level are the same. It's the same thing expressing, just like source, the same thing expressing as all these different fractals. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Okay, so let me just geek out for a second. Is that okay? What are we doing? I, I just want to geek out for a second. Oh, sure. Go, go right. for it. Kick your shoes up. Do yeah. I need to do anything? <laughs> right. No. No. I'll just sit here and be an exalted like, queen. Wah. Um, so just consider for a moment, you're a being in another star system, understanding that uh, Project Ascension is happening on Gaia. In, in the future, of course, higher level beings have no concept of time, right? So they're seeing everything. Okay, a quantum computer thing, I can see all the highest outcomes and everything. All right, I'm going to project into uh, those realities as a being in form, and, and not like a personal thing, but like we're all going to project into these realities as beings going through ascension, pretending to be human, and we're going to ignite this human genome, and then the energies are going to come, and like ascension has been inevitable for a long time. So when you're looking at that trajectory, you're like, what are we going to need? And that's where like the crystal, crystal codes come from. Yeah. But when it came to animals... Plants, minerals, that I, that's where I, I really lit up. Where it was just, and I'm not talking about plant medicine at all. I'm talking about the, the forethought as, as, a, as a galactic, as a creator being. Even like highest level, like ancients of days, you know, like responsible for creating entire realities, Elohim. Um, <laughs> like having that kind of consciousness that could anticipate what is the soil like, what is the water quality like in the future that would trigger something to present or how this one thing is important, how do we get it to endure? And I feel like you receiving this, igniting all the people in this field right now mm -hmm. with, hey, the living library is unlocked Guy is talking That's to us. Lock. However, it comes through your vibration it. is your responsibility, right? It's accountability showing up. But uh, but I feel you're going to ignite a lot of people with some of those symbols. Mm. But um, but I was just I was just fascinated by the anticipation of a frequency change and how things would be revealed. And like I again, I lived in the wilderness, so I was starting to see different insects. And like, mm. where is that animal from? And all of a sudden, this plant stuff, you know, like mm. shiny things. And, and if, you, if you have that connection with uh, uh, maybe not so much the elementals, but definitely the kingdoms, plants, minerals, animals, uh, when you're asking them to express their crystalline self, they, they give you those codes. You know, they give you... Let me show you all that I am. You know, the neural network of trees just turning into something else right now, which is something I was really connected with with the Sasquatch. You know, they were like, it's, you, it's a transportation system, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Right. But, but again, like the forethought of, um, of anticipating what we would need and we as like those higher beings who are creating that stuff. And then Gaia being the place that's supposed to grow all this abundance frequency as well as produce, you know, yeah. for the whole solar system. You know, this the whole solar, I love that, Sandra, when you I say, like, this is the garden planet, right, guys? The garden planet, it, it, it's, it, it, it exists to sustain, nurture, and feed the entire solar system, right? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure out in this timeline how to feed the human species on the planet. But yeah. it's designed to feed the whole solar system. Yeah, that's beautiful. and that's like when we get back into that organic realities and everything, that you can see in New Earth, it just, everything is abundant and yeah. joyful and, and really um, carrying that Christed frequency. So this, as the garden planet, um, 
has some, some unique uh, contributions. It's like everything came from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find one thing that was just, just Gaia. It's only here. Like everything mm -hmm. was, oh, this is from Venus. This is from the Arcturians. This is a gift from the place. It was from Gifting, all over yeah. the place. And then some of them were universal. They're like universal representation because you don't just look at the plant or the animal just as you wouldn't look, I wouldn't look at Kate and not see all that she is. I see your divine light. I am witness oh. to the radiance that you are. Mm. Mm. I see your true heart. But, but seeing that again in the Christed state, then you can start scanning everything and going, <laughs> whoa, yeah. you know, that, that is not a tree. That is not a plant, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but but having again the forethought to do that trajectory was like really it just really lit up something because you need to apply it to your personal journey you know anytime you have the aha uh -huh, um, it's like ah okay so let me anticipate um, and that's something about being a way shower too you know I was teaching ascension before that was a catchphrase so it's like having that trajectory in heart. Like, this is the coolest thing that I see happening or that's presenting, and then going with it and planting all those seeds along the way. So when other people are like, wow, ascension, you know, they can just, it makes it easier. And of course, that's our, our task is to make it easier. So planting and cultivating too, because we're cultivating, right? I mean, yeah. this whole idea of like, <clears throat> we're using this with Gaia, this the garden and the garden plant and the planting, right? So we're cultivating in a new way. And, you know, this is also one of the ways we can use the mother way is we, we, we have these seeds in the cultivation with love. We hold them in our hand. We love whatever we're planting with our intention, um, the codes, the plants, whatever. And then we don't, we don't score the earth and we don't just, you know, throw the seeds down. We, we beautifully spread them at, from a place of cherishing them and loving them. And so it's, it's, it's planting and cultivating. And I think, you yeah. know, in your way showing how, how beautiful you've done that as well um, in, the, in this garden. Um, but that's uh, well. kind of Essianic though. You mm -hmm. know, the Essenes, they like worship the first six inches of soil. Hmm. Like they knew yeah. there was, that, that was the way of the future. Yeah. You know, they were very trajectory focused. Like, right. oh, we need to interact in this way because because Gaia gives you gifts when you do that. Right. You know, I notice too, like I've, I'm blessed with roses in my garden, you know, and I'll, I just, you know, send them some Christed frequency and they, and it's almost immediate. The second you hit the plants with that, it's, that feedback loop yeah. is so beautiful. It's do you fun. want to, will you share yeah. a couple? Yeah, let's share some. The, so, um, we've, I've had, 14 come through so far. I think we're going to share four today. And um, wow. before we finish, I'll open it up and just, I know it's hard to see <clears throat> for all of you, but just to get an idea of what's going on inside so you the book. get the book vibe. Yeah. yeah, taking the vibe. But um, let's start with this one. Um, this one, so each of these has come through with a, um, a symbol. And then the, the statement that's in the gold is the oracle or the statement that comes through um, that may or may not make logical sense, but it's not about logic. And then the, the statement underneath it is a, is a practice that you can, you can work with on this one. So this one is, um, and I'll read it out loud because um, these work both visually and th through the visual field, the symbols hit the optic nerve and then they connect with the vagus nerve, which Sandra talked about earlier, to create an activation, right, of your DNA. And then as I read, or you can read them to yourself aloud, but there is an act of reading these oracles aloud that um, stimulates your auditory system, right? So the auditory and the visual system and the vagus nerve, that all works together, yeah? So this first one, we are one of all that is. We are one. We are one of all. All that is. We are one of all that is. So be one breath one spirit, one energy. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, feel that one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, I like this one. Me too. I like this one too. This one, <clears throat> hold the lamp of integrity. Hold the lamp of integrity. Hold. Bear witness to. The lamp. The light. Bear witness to the light of integrity. Integrity, truth, and purity, and love. Hold the lamp of integrity. Bear witness to the light of truth, impurity, and love. Mm, I like that one. Yeah. I'm reminded of that Rumi poem that I used to use in my presentations, I Am Witness, mm. where he's just like, you know, the source trusts the, the good witness, the one who reports things out of integrity, not out of self out of self yeah or the ego yeah, yeah. beautiful and so it was always be a good witness mm. be a good witness be the one that the judge trusts mm. to have the integrity and the truth and who's yeah. the judge god indeed source oh, beautiful yeah thanks Rumi, for being with us today i feel Rumi in the room too <laughs> What do we have next? Oh, I've been saying this one a lot this, these last couple of days. The center of the wheel remains still. The center. The center. The center remains still. The center of the wheel remains still. The wheel turns. We move forward. We move backward. We move whichever way we steer, right? But the center of the wheel remains still. Now... <clears throat> We have a little bit of a... Oh, wait, a, I'm getting a download. Okay. Can we oh, be in flow? I, all right, let's... Um, let's do it. Let's all take a breath. I know all of you with the light codes and the tones are like... Wow, <laughs> Janet's on it. <laughs> okay, take a breath. Ah. <laughs> That one needed to land on behalf of all concerned, right? <sighs> Feeding out to the collective consciousness. Hmm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, sister. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. Whew. My heart's okay. Open even more, and I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> Find Infinite. nourishment in deep rest, <clears throat> deep heart, deep wholeness. For here is where spirit finds vitality and animation. I've been guided to just talk for a second about deep rest, because in this now, we have forgotten or we don't know about, we don't get enough deep rest. And, and that's all I'll say, but... I see a lot of nodding heads, so... Guilty. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't mean that we go to bed at 10 and get up at 8, that we may not sleep during those hours. We need naps. We need, we need the practice of deep rest. And so how do we find still point? How does, the, how does the center of our wheel and our collective wheel remain still? Deep rest, deep heart, deep wholeness. Yeah? Okay. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> Wisdom yeah. begins with wonder. Wisdom begins with wonder. Wonder at the mystery of divine source. Wonder at the mystery, capital M. Wonder at the mystery, the mystery of divine source, the mystery of source the mystery of the divine. Every word is coded. Every word is coded. Mm. I feel that source vibration 
in that. You know, the, the intention of source to just expand life and explore. And when I tap into source, creator, or at least the level of creator, infinite creator that we can connect with in these bodies because infinite creator, let's be honest, would blow your circuits completely. Yeah. Like we have levels of self-revelation and theories and everything like that, which is source's intention. It's working through all of us and everything. But I feel something in that sense of what if, wonder, what if I did this? What if I created a planet that would ascend? You know, all of those intentions, I feel that the wisdom and the wonder working together. Coming together, yeah. yeah. And in the mix is awe. But they didn't want me to put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> they said stick with wisdom and wonder. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, you know, thank you. Um, one thing we didn't mention, and I'm just going to, all right, I'll open oh, you up. Oh, goodness. I'll open you up. Wing, wing. Da, da, da. Yeah. Note papyrus. Um, one thing, the Yum. Gaia Codis. Yeah. Oh, you Codis. did a good job. Thank you. Oh, I needed that. Oh, <laughs> you did it's been so hard. <laughs> Kudos, sister. Phew. I mean, I praise, know I've, praise, been, I've praise, been working praise, to let go of this perfectionist praise, praise, part praise. for so long. Okay. What I wanted to share here, though, is that, sister, you said, you know, what's the purpose of the codex? And what came through is the codex is, so first of all, I was told, I asked why me, and they said, well, you already wrote this. You just need to bring it out now. You already wrote it, so why, you know, we need you to write it. We need you to transcribe it in the now. And then the other thing, which is what the, these two pages say, um, is that the, the, the Gaia Codex um, is a guide for the new human to live on the new earth, okay? Or the omega human or the divine human, yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now, the, this, this is 14 symbols and oracles, concomitant oracles with actions, and there's other ones in here, and I'll have ways for you all to, if you're interested in this and they've resonated with mm -hmm. you, to learn more. Um, and it goes through all different things. We get into love and how to love in the new earth, new human form, and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. what not, yeah, well, there's no not what not to do. Oh, look, isn't that one cute? So fun. It's cute, isn't it? That's adorable, number 11. Um, <laughs> so, you know, this is a, this is a work in progress. Not a work. It's a piece that's coming through. But right now, it's 14 symbols and 14 oracles with these actions. And like I said earlier, it's a guide for living on the new earth as the new human. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I love this, sister. So how many of you receive codes and you write them down and get the downloads and everything like that? Beautiful. All right. So the frequency that's coming through you, of course, is like light language. It's the frequency coming through you as an interpretation of information, right? So it can show up in, uh, in the physical by writing it down and having symbols and everything. But I just want to encourage everyone to ground it, you know, what we call light grounding. Ground it into these realms because when I feel into this or what we were experiencing, like I had, uh, I had some crazy experiences when we were going through this. I was seeing like these gold etched impermeable tablets and everything like that. Like that's my frequency of what's going to gold, <laughs> thank you. Gold etched tablets, you say? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it, but the they thing is when you hat. light ground it, when you say yes, call back on the creativity thing. When you say yes, al allow the quantum effects to do the work. So you kind of stay out of the way. I love that you're neutral about this. Like, I don't know. Like, this isn't your job and it's going to get published and everything. Probably. Oh, God, no. No. It's just like capturing this vibration think. and this thing. And then, of course, it stimulated me to, to dig into 
galactic origins of some of the stuff that we work with all the time. So and garden planet never, restoration, no. you got pretty zest. And you're about here that. at the crystal. And Con. here we are together on this th on stage. stage. I know. I'm yeah. showing you, and people are excited. I know it's um, fun. It's pretty cool. And I do want to <laughs> say something about the creative process because this is fun. Is that um, you know JJ, you spoke to this, and, and Sandra, you talk about this too, and I'm sure. Uh, you know, please nod if you're in agreement with you, like you feel this, but I get completely lost when I'm doing this. Like, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And it tells me when it wants to work or play. It doesn't want to work. <laughs> That's not about work. It's like it wants to play. And oftentimes it's like 8.30 to 1.30 in the morning is its prime time. You know, that's mm -hmm. when it wants me to be with it. And stuff comes through. This all came through over the course of, well, as it turns out, it was like a jigsaw puzzle to put together. That was my role. And to, to interpret these symbols and draw them and like everything Sandra just said. But um, it happened right when I got back from the 12-12 in mm -hmm. December. I got back and there were all the mass consciousness holidays and stuff and that came through. And I was in front of my fire uh, one day on the floor and I was like, oh, I have to go through all of my journals, my last three journals, because there were bits and pieces of these oracles in the journals, and I just, I just got motivated to do that, and I spent a couple of hours transcribing those oracles from three different journals. I just went back, and it was like, and it was cool because you know this process when you go back over things, the the things that needed to come out looked like they were on fire, fire letters. Oh, I guess I should write that on a piece of paper, and so I had this like thick bunch of eight and a half by 11 white papers with these oracles on them. And, and that was the first process in December. And then these symbols started to come through and I had a few in the journal and I had to put them together. So I had symbols, I had oracles, I had some of the um, other statements, the, they call them practices. And then it came time to put the puzzle together. Mm -hmm. And so then the next phase was, I've been, I've been scribing this on a rosewood desk. <laughs> I mean, it likes the rosewood. What can I say? You know, it's Gaia. It's a Gaia Codex. It's crystal and Gaia Codex. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this work, this project on a rosewood, antique rosewood desk. And, um, and so then it was time to put the symbols with the oracles. But I didn't have the oracles with the practices. I had practices, oracles, symbols. So it had to come together in alignment. Mm. And that was a fun process. Oh, this symbol goes with this oracle. This oracle goes with this action. Then sometimes the or action would just come through with the oracle. It would just light. It would scribe through me. It wanted only me to use a um, very specific, this project, a pearlescent white fountain pen that I dipped in an inkwell. I'm like, again, what era do I live in? But anyway, I did You're that. remembering. I did, I'm remembering. Because I did re write this a while ago, yeah. uh, apparently. <laughs> Uh, I am remembering. Thank you, sister. Um, and so that, and that was so fun. I mean, the way this um, fountain pen, um, the weightedness of it, and 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 the way it moves across this handmade paper, so delicious. Yeah, you know? and you have to pay Yummy. attention to the frequency. Yes. You know, when you're getting guidance, why a pearlescent pen like that? Why this quality of paper why does it have to be you know uh, there's uh, when you follow that guidance that uh, eventually it comes to light yeah but a lot of times you're like i don't know okay you know but when you listen like that that's a thing i would love for everyone to learn and be aware of now is the frequency and the vibration of I everything that you're interacting with because again, you know, that Christed frequency when it's emanating, and Kate's been working on that for a while too, that emanation all of a sudden starts organizing mm. realities. And then you're getting parts of yourself back, parts of your galactic self back, like all and other things that. fall off really fast. Yeah. You know, that's part of it too, right? The it revelation. Happens faster too. Stuff drops away. Yeah. Like the morning presentations. Did it happen? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> or even in the moment, like literally while I'm delivering presentations, I'll be like, "This are, we already did this. You know, it's just like, you get in that quantum consciousness. Fun to navigate. Hey, you want to talk about a couple of galactic things? Let's talk about anything you want. I can't see what time it is. 
I never can see what time it is anymore. I mean, one of the first things that dropped off was my watches off my wrist. Oh, we got so much time. So, oh, it's 311. Of course it is. <laughs> I better write that in the codex. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So what are we talking about? Uh, oh, oh. So this galactic yes. heritage thing, there were, so I just, uh, I don't want to repeat everything, but, um, so, <laughs> sorry, my higher self is singing a song from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. A Venusian is a person in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood. A Venusian is a person in your neighborhood. They're the people that you meet when you're walking down the street. They're the people that you meet each day. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> So much. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> More singing. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, Venus, the Venusians, is one of our closest neighbors, understanding that they would go through the ascension process first and hold a container and a whole lot of information for what Gaia is going through. And Gaia was going to eventually evolve into this spiritual sun and as she does that with all the frequencies that are coming through, like the frequency is a frequency is a frequency. The light that's returning does different things to each planet. Mm. So Venus, in their knowledge, um, said, all right, we're going to go first. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, they, you ever notice how bright Venus is sometimes? It's like, wow, she's radiating that. But our neighbors, you know, if we start thinking of the solar system as our neighbors, um, the, again, they had the forethought to plant things here mm. for our awareness or to anchor energies. And which one first? The redwoods are from Venus. So the mm. redwoods, if you ever notice how unusual you feel the first time you see a redwood or go to return them, if you have return to them if you haven't seen them in a while, I, I remember distinctly doing the Mount Shasta loop over to um, the ocean to see the redwoods for the first time. And I was just like, I was overwhelmed. I was in my car, but I had to pull over because I was just like, oh dear God, they're so huge. They're so amazing. I was just like, I, I couldn't believe, I was just and the overwhelmed, heart. my heart and my consciousness and everything. And, uh, you know, people get excited about seeing big trees, but I was having like a <laughs> radically different reaction <laughs> to the redwoods. <laughs> um, so, so I tapped into this, you know, and Kate is stimulating this conversation. I was like, the redwoods, the redwoods. Um, and sure enough, they're anchored. That's why they're only in one place. They're gigantic, why they live the way that they do, why they're somewhat indestructible. Yeah, their bark you is know. so thick. That's, the fire doesn't penetrate it. To yeah, people. yeah. You and know. again, just, let's just put ourselves in the, in the Venusian forethought of like, we want to anchor energy and stuff that's just going to blow their, con their hearts wide open, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And trees are a very high vibration on this planet, and of course they're all connected, right? And if you ever connect, spend a lot of time in the wilderness or lay up against a tree with a Sasquatch, <laughs> oh. you'll feel like, oh, there's energy there, right? So if you're going to plant something on the garden planet that will stick around for a long time, that will be a, a little shockingly huge, right? It will get your attention. It's not going to disappear in deforestation or whatever. Like, everyone's going to go, don't touch that, because it's so incredible, right? Having, again, the forethought and looking at the timeline going, let's make it really big and this huge energy. And just in this one section, because there's um, wi within Gaia, underneath, 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 are, again, those crystals that are connected to Lemurian energy, you know, all those ancient civilizations that use that same energy, but now they're, you know, expressing as 
trees on the surface. So I was mm. like, wow, no wonder you feel that way when you're around them. And, that, and the Venusian vibration, if you haven't connected with our neighbors, it's all about beauty, expansion of creativity, divine order, just so much peace, so much heart energy. It's quite beautiful. That's why we have, you know, goddess Venus, because it's all beauty and expansion. And, you know, Giselle, my sister, has made the Venus villa here in Sedona with that vibration. You can just, I just got goosebumps, sister. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but again, with that intention of, like, divine order that just raises your vibration, I'm just going to tap into something that I, f I forgot about earlier is... Um, in the Lemurian consciousness, did I talk about Lemurian temples? Mm -hmm. No. So the Lemurian consciousness um, presented to me, and they were um, showing me how you created uh, a, a temple space that was not just the, it's not just a rejuvenation station, because they weren't very out of alignment. You know, Lemurians, it's, they're, you're barely in form. Um, but when, when they took me into this temple space, and the etheric, of course, not in the physical, but uh, there was a sound coming out of the walls, like a, a vibration coming out of the... There was crystals embedded in there. Mm -hmm. Again, there's a crystal thing again. And I was like, how is that sound being projected into this space? And the temple keepers just did this. Pointing to my heart. It was a frequency that they were able to emanate into that space and maintain just through their heart intention, which I found really beautiful. And even though we're uh, attempting to create that in this space, like an intentional space that carries that vibration, like just feel into what we're going to create when we're all in that harmonic and dedicated and can make the walls sing. Mm. We've been doing a lot of singing to the stones in the meditation groups up here um, because you can feel it. It's like the, it's like the ground gets wavy or electric. Yeah. You know, they respond. Well, Sedona is full of crystals, of course, but um, they do. They respond. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're getting our, we're getting our skills back, right? <laughs> it's just so exciting. Um, Venus, also responsible for all the white, fragrant flowers that make you go, oh, <laughs> gardenias, you know, or jasmine, mm. things like that. Lilac. And again, the frequency of that fragrance and what it does to your heart or you just feel intoxicated, they love that. <laughs> they love that. They've got all kinds of elixirs, too, to make you feel that way, which is quite beautiful. Mm. And this one I was, I was surprised by. Uh, eagles. So eagles, too, as a symbol of freedom, as a symbol of the brotherhood and everything, it was actually created and gifted here. And... When you see an eagle out of nowhere, all of a sudden, you, don't you feel that? Oh, an eagle. Mm. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> I see condors when I'm doing gate work and stuff, and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. Thank you, thank you. But you see an eagle, and it's like, wow, an eagle. And, and that's part of the reason why the Brotherhood used it as a symbol for all the light codes that are in the United mm. States and everything, you know, freedom, et cetera because it's encoded with those Venusian frequencies. Mm. Wow, I, f I feel that. All right. Um, you know how you feel when, and, and this is, I think this is, uh, I think this is across the board, global, birds. <laughs> how birds. many people, like everything Bingo. stops when there's like a cool bird nearby. Yeah. <laughs> Everything stops. Bird. <laughs> Just like, dip, 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 dip. you're like, bird, cardinal. Just, <laughs> yeah. Everything stops. I don't even remember what I was doing. Like, thank you, my cardinal. I'm so in love with my cardinal. Cardinal. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Cardinal. But, uh, but birds are actually gifts from the masters. So we're kind of getting out of the solar system, right? So, and all of us as connected to that realm 
um, look at the high amount of creativity in the colors, the frequencies, the size, the shape, the diversity of color and song. song. And bird song is a natural DNA activator. Mm. They've already proven that, you know, in the lab. Um, so you're walking around with like all these DNA activators and everything yeah. because they're a, so they're a gift from uh, the ascended masters, which I I found really beautiful because they do create that coherence. You know, when everything stops, shh, oh look at that, how beautiful, you know that kind of thing. Um, and again, you know that frequency. Thank you, all the tree pumps. Um, and the the last one I want to share is uh, is something that a lot of us encounter on our our journey of mastery and that's the rose so the rose although it has channels through venus pleiades um and the yeah okay <laughs> sorry um and through some of the central suns um the, the rose and the reason why it presents so strongly with all of us is not because of the sisterhoods or the brotherhoods. They're using that because it's actually a universal light signature across the realms. And it just happens to be expressed in form through something that, I don't know anybody who doesn't like roses. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, and it doesn't have to be your favorite, but there is something very unique happening there. And again, you have to tap into the frequency, not the way it looks. Not, I mean, color is, is beautiful. And of course, we've done all kinds of things with, with roses. But uh, I want to just visit, you know, we were talking about Bulgarian rose being the highest frequency of smell, of highest frequency fragrance on the planet. And even like the, the lineage of the Bulgarian rose, like why did they pack up those things from Damascus and have to travel all the way to Bulgaria? Why did they take the rose bushes? All this stuff, you know, they could take food, supplies, mm. everything. They're like the roses, right? Because they were keepers of that vibration that were guided to, you know, let's take them and plant them over here kind of thing. But the rose is like a, not a universal symbol. I want to get away from the, the symbol of the rose and actually feel into the vibration, the frequency of freedom. Mm -hmm. It's not, a lot of times roses are associated with like divine feminine or whatever because they're pretty, but there's actually freedom codes that are universal in nature that allows us to be in our divine nature as well, not being outside, but being in the natural state mm. that you are. Um, so, so across the realms, if you look at, let's just tap in for a moment and tap into how the rose expresses here. It's lovely, right? It's beautiful and so many metaphors with the garden and the thorns and the, uh, just uh, such a great example of our journeys through the rose, right? Now just expand out to what it means on a solar system level. The essence of that doesn't mean physical roses on some planets. It's a permeating intention, freedom to express right through the heart, right through the frequency of that Christ consciousness, which is also universal. And just expand out now, galactic level. See all those gardeners of that frequency? Galactic gardeners. Mm -hmm. And the intention to share that with us in the physical as part of our journey. Expand out to the universal level. Activate. It's a light signature there. An interpretation of a divine intention from source. I am free to express. I am free, free, free. And 
just take it multiverse through all the realms. And feeling right through the Trinity circuit up to source. Gift. And everything presented to you in this now for this moment in your journey. Beautiful. Let's launch it with an alm. Take a breath. Ah.